Oh my God, I am live. Wow, wow, wow. Hi world. My name is Maria Banga and I am founder of the association Hope for the Abuse and the Battered. I'm a mental health advocate. I'm a psychotherapist. I'm so many things and I am an evangelist. And so I just put all of it and I just you know, do what I have to do whenever and all of that, all to the glory of God. So um, this afternoon, I want to do this quick video to uh, remind us and uh, remind, you know, care providers and uh, medical personnel, right, to watch out for the mental health of their patients, whatever um, situation or condition brought someone to you or whatever it is the person you are taking care of has as a physical um, condition think about their mental health too because uh, we cannot separate one from the other especially the mental health right you know someone might break their leg or let me talk about my friend who had um, a surgery on her hand she she had a bike accident um, an accident on a motorbike in the month of may and um, she thought it was just something light and they tried to Take care of it you know uh, in, in a like other people do you know you you go to the um, massages and you put the, the local things there and all of that you know do an x-ray and they say no it's not so bad and everything and then they, they, they wrapped it up and she was going like this but after a while there was no sign of improvement and so um, she went for further consultations in different places and they said not only surgery and um, yeah, she had that surgery on the 4th of June. And so um, I wasn't around the whole month of June. And so when I came back, she's my bosom friend for me. So she's really like my sister. I went to see her, been to see her twice. Once I went for one night and the last time I spent the weekend there. So I could actually be with her for two days and really, really observe and have a conversation with her. And it was in this second trip that she opened up to me about how depressed she's feeling. You know, she she's an interior decorator. She works a lot. She used to work a lot with her hands and all of that. And she's just wondering. She's not been able to work since that accident, right? And um, she's just wondering what the future holds for her. And she just thinks that life has been so unfair to her. And she would rather not even have made it. You know, some kind of talk. And I'm like, no, you are here. And they, they, they didn't amputate it. And you know, so we really had a lot, a, a long conversation. And I just thought about um, a kidney, kidney health awareness advocate who died a few days ago in the Cameroonian community abroad. And of course, those of us who knew her back home had such a loss. And um, she and I actually connected online. Um, due to my fierce mental health advocacy back at the time. Um, and yes, so she she had a foundation and counseling and mental health. There was a time I even had to go and do some work for them, you know, volunteer and stuff, and then COVID hit and it was impossible and stuff like that. Yeah, and she used to tell me, Sometimes you just don't want to see people. Sometimes you just don't want to talk to people. Sometimes you cannot help but think, why me? Sometimes you think life is unfair when you just want to start smiling and think that, oh, it's all done and dusted. Boom. Something comes up and everything, you know. And, um, and uh, well, it, 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 that's all mental health, right? Um, the sadness and all of those things. Um, I have a few other friends who also have some health conditions like, um, hi, hi, Elvis, thanks for joining me, who have some health conditions like, um, you know, other health conditions, you know, uh, and you, you might think that those are physical health conditions, you know, and yet mentally they have a lot of challenges too. Some talk about it, some don't talk about it, you know, because there's this stigma, you know, if you just start saying, uh, I feel depressed. What were I talking about? You know, oh, I didn't, I haven't slept for the past three days. Hey, oh, so you start talking to yourself, you know, this kind of things. And, and sometimes you, 
you suffer stigma from people too who will be like they'll run away from you or they will not want to associate with you for example if you're a woman you start saying who is going to marry me if they hear that i have not only that condition but that once in a while i lose my mind or i feel so sad and depressed you are already prone to some kind of things like maybe post or postpartum depression so no 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 you know so you don't talk about it because if you talk about it that's already a big negative sign on your forehead you know invisible one but once somebody asks you a question and you just answer in a certain kind of way you are off so you start being worried about if you're a man you'll be like ah which girl is going to talk to me which girl will want to go out with me for example if i have sickle cell and then when we are sitting there, pap, I have a crisis. Are they not just going to run and leave me there and uh, stuff like that? So it starts to mess. It starts to play with your thought pattern, you know. And before you realize it, well, your behavior is actually either affirming what you think about yourself or you start, you know, just rejecting people and even people who really had every intention to, you know, just come close and just be your friend, not not out of pity but you think no it's out of pity that's why they're coming towards me and all of that is reflective of a distress mental health distress so i just thought really about my friend and i was like we have to risk we have to have these conversations more often and sometimes people with lived experience are the best people to tell us what they feel you must not have been diagnosed with a mental um, ill health like me who was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. You must not have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder or schizophrenia to say that you know what mental health um, challenges are all about. No. And back home in Africa, uh, people hardly get diagnosed. Diagnosed what? People, uh, we take care of ourselves, we manage it or we don't talk about it, we struggle. And then before you know it, well, people have kicked the bucket, taken their lives out, you know, died by suicide, all of those things. So it's bizarre. So the best advocate, frankly speaking, is you yourself. I sit here, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder in 2014. And I had rheumatoid arthritis, it's like serious one for two years when I could barely walk. I'm telling you, I suffered more from the mental health challenge and the frustration even during that period than from the arthritis themselves you know and um thank god I'm, I'm 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 well today i'm healed no more rheumatoid arthritis no more um, mental health challenges and all of those things it's been a long journey and yet i know that in that journey the advocacy i did for myself and for many other people it helped me a lot on my journey to recovery and I can say I'm still on that journey because once in a while, though not so frequent, because now my spiritual life is also very, very, very on par. But sometimes I can feel sad or I can feel overwhelmed and all of those feelings. But once I identify them, I don't let them linger on for too long. I just take action. And you only know all of these things if you talk, if you talk to people, if you do uh, research, if you, you know, reach out for help. Sometimes people think, ah, going to see a therapist, what's that? What's wrong with me? Am I mad? No, therapists are not only for mad people, people who are running on the street. I, I cannot even work with those people because they will not talk to me. So it will just be a monologue. And so what am I going to do? I cannot help them. It is instead for people who are recognizing some signs of distress. It could just be emotional wise. Your relationship is taking a hit or your performance at your job site you know, or stuff like that, or even just you having some challenges with doing your day-to-day -day activities like taking a shower, you start being so lazy, brushing your teeth, you don't feel like even eating, either you just, you have lost appetite or you have just too much appetite, insatiable, you know, you, you, you watch your patterns and then you see where there is a, there is a shift, there is a, no, 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 you say, uh-uh, something is coming up, you know, and for some people, they will say, first thing they'll do is, I'll pray, I'll pray, I'll pray, I will do that. Some other people don't know how to just get into prayer mode, non-stop. They need to talk to somebody or they need to. And sometimes when you even just know those things, before even talking to somebody, you might even just, you know, do some research instead of spending other time on TikTok, just watching other people laugh. Go and check. What do I do if I cannot sleep for one day? 
or what can I do to natural remedies for a good sleep pattern or all of those kind of things. If there's a lot of information out there. So do not suffer in silence. As I said, I'm a therapist and honestly, I've worked with a lot of people for free or for very, very affordable rates. And then my association, Hope for the Abuse and, ba and the Hope for the Abuse and the Bad that that's the, the roll up behind me there. Yeah. We also work with people, you know, especially when we have a, a project which receives some funding, we can afford to um, counsel people and all of that. And there are a lot of support groups um, available online. Most of them are free to join and all of that. Just don't, don't, don't stigmatize yourself. Don't suffer in silence. You might think it's just a physical illness. It's just the hand. It's just the leg. It's just that, what do you call it? Um, it's just that, uh, I don't know, how do you call it? It's just that, uh, I'm just on a wheelchair. It's just the... It's just that no, it's just the kidney, it's just that no, it's much more than that. So please take care of yourself. You doctor, please ask questions. How do you feel instead of how are you? When you ask someone how do you feel, the person actually thinks that you really mean it. So they will tell you how they feel. They would hardly just say fine. But if you say how are you, people are just used to saying fine. But if you say how do you feel, the person will be like feel. Okay, how do I feel? I don't feel so good. I feel so, so. And then once they tell you that, you can ask questions. I remember asking a friend two days ago. I just wrote to her what's up. It's been such a while. And I said, how do you feel? And she told me that what she feels better today. And I was not able to ask her what happened the other days. And she was like, oh, she lost her son uh, a month ago. He was assassinated. Can you imagine the devastation of that? But people might see you and think, oh no, it's okay, you're a strong woman, you overcome that. And you, you will just be there, you know. Yet, imagine, you don't just overcome such a news like that. They assassinate your son, 30 years old. No, that can send somebody, you know. So she needs to be around people and, and people need to know that it's not just about coming and attending the funeral and bringing all of that food and making all of that parade and everything and then going no 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 there's so much more someone needs to check on her often maybe not even leave her to live alone for some time and all of those things i have to just do this and you know just check on her again and those, those kind of things so we we need to learn those languages how do you feel is better than how are you um and then you the people if, if it's in a family you're living with someone yes they might have a visible physical condition they might be disabled you know or, you, they might be challenged, they might, be, and you think it's just that you just want to be pushing them around in a wheelchair. Just the fact that they're sitting in that chair already makes them feel helpless. And and you can push and be using some kind of language, and then they just get hopeless and depressed and all of that. And they either shut down or they become violent, all of those things. And then you'll be like, ah, are you the only one who is disabled? No, we cannot be using those kind of languages. So I'm just doing this video to kind of encourage us to think about it every now and then, especially with people who have these physical health conditions. It doesn't just stop at that. So let's just show some more compassion, have some more empathy. Don't wait to see somebody walking on the street naked to say that, ah, that one has a mental illness. Even at that time, it will be worse. The stigma is terrible. No, please, please, please don't do that. So you, the person... You, the medical health um, professional, and you, the caregiver, family, friends, we all have a role to play. May the good Lord help us to really take, think about these things and um, to pray for guidance on how best to go about um, doing what we have to do. You know, because when one person is hurt, to be honest, somehow, somehow, everybody is affected. And at least the closest people to them, and all of that. I have um, suffered a few losses due to mental health conditions and I myself, I was a person with a lived experience and I know how devastating it is to people around and sometimes we still cannot talk about it, you know, due to that same stigma. So the best thing is prevention, right? It's better than cure. Okay. Thank you so much, Elvis, for joining me. Have a wonderful afternoon. God bless us all.